Have you ever wondered why TanStack tools have so many versions? If you want an example, TanStack Query has 915 releases. And also, if we go on TanStack Router, even if the project is younger, it has 700 releases. And also, the last one was two hours ago. But if we go on the full list, you will find that after two hours ago, the previous one was five hours ago. And then we have yesterday, two days ago, two days ago again, and so on. The good news is that even if there's a bug, you will get a fix almost immediately. And when there are new features, once again, you already get them if you update your package. But on the other side, it means that things might change quick. But here's the catch. All the TanSack tools follow semantic versioning, which means there is a major version only if there are breaking changes. New features are listed in a minor update and bug fixes are in a patch update, which means unless there is a new major release, your app shouldn't break by updating the version. There's only one thing that can change and it is types from TypeScript. But as mentioned in the query docs, types are not considered as breaking changes and are usually patch similar changes. And in any case, if you lock your React query package to a specific version, you should be safe anyway. But also type changes are not so frequent and they're usually improving the existing type, so this shouldn't be a problem anyway. To recap, we say that all projects follow semantic versioning. And if you have a look, you will notice that the releases are pretty much immediately after the pull requests are closed. For example, here you see a fix and there's a release. You see a doc change, nothing happened. There's a feature and you get a new release. So is Tanner always releasing manually? Well, obviously not. And if you're curious how everything is automated, buckle up, we're gonna talk about that right now. But before that, if you want to support my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. As you might expect, everything is obviously handled through GitHub Actions. There is usually one action that runs on pull request that just makes sure that everything is okay. And there's also another action that runs when there are pushes on main and this is the one performing the release. But let's have a look at the code. So this is Tanstack form, but the CA action is pretty much the same all old Tanstack projects. You can see here, like I mentioned in the beginning, that this runs on pushes on main and also you can run it manually with workflow dispatch. And here you already see something interesting that is the usage of NX Cloud with our actions. I'm not gonna go too deep about that, but in short, we are running our tests, not directly into the GitHub action, but through NX Cloud that also gives us parallel execution and caching, saving us quite a lot of time. And also another thing worth mentioning is that before running the test, there's a setup that is exactly the same for all repositories, that is another GitHub action in the tanstack slash config repository. We can have a quick look at this action. We're now in the tanstack config repository, which basically sets up node, pm, pm, and caching that are the same configuration for all tanstack projects. Back to our action in the main repository, that is tanstack4 for this example, you see that right after running the test and stopping the NX agent, there's finally the publish step that at the end of the day, after setting up some configs, it runs CI publish that is a common in our package JSON. You will find that CI publish uses a script that is again the same for all Tanstack repositories. And if I go here under scripts and publish.js, you see that everything this script is doing is running with some parameters, a publish script that unsurprisingly comes from the Tanstack config repository and this is where all the publish magic happens. Which means it's time to go back to the config repository and have a look at the publish script. It is obviously under package, source, publish and index.js and this script handles pretty much everything. It's like almost 500 lines, but it's not too complicated and we're gonna see the highlight of the most interesting part. To begin with, there are some checks on branches and configurations, but the first thing that is really interesting to us is how to decide if there is a major, a minor, or a patch version. With the script, parsing all the commit messages that are between the previous release and the current one, looking if the commit was a fix, refactor, or performance, which will trigger a patch release, a feature, releasing a minor release, or a breaking change, releasing a major release. But there's also an extra guard making sure that major versions are only tagged and released manually, to also make sure that breaking changes are really intentional and well communicated. And actually, to be clear, I say that this checks on all commit messages, but in fact, if you go on the commit list of any Tanstack repository, you will find that there's always only one commit and the reason is quite simple. We always squash our pull requests so you can do whatever commits you want here, use almost 
whatever title you want here. But the most important thing will be the name of the pull request, which almost everything will be used as the final commit. Back to our publish.js, we now know in which branch and configuration are we. We know which type of release we want to do. And also if, for example, it was just a doc change and there's nothing else to do. By the way, the documentation of Stanstack works in a quite particular way. And now that I think about it, it is interesting. So I might make a separated video on how the documentation work, but let's go back to a script. Here we're decided which tag should be applied to the release. And here we're also making sure that all dependencies are updated. Because if a package like Tanstack Form gets a new version, all the examples and other packages using Tanstack Form will be automatically updated to use the latest version. And that's what this part of the script is doing. Next up, we have the markdown chain load. This part of the script generates at the end of the day what will end up here in the final chain load, listing all the involved commits and the packages that have been released. And after all the preparation data is complete, the change log is generated, the packages are finally updated, there's a final check to make sure if it was a dry version that can be used, for example, for testing purposes. And now all the changes are finally committed, for example, the package update we just mentioned, and the packages are now finally published to npm, ready for you to be installed. And that was it. The Tanstack tool has millions of downloads weekly, and I thought it was interesting to dive a little bit deeper on how all the update mechanism works, as you can also learn something from it, and why not, if you're also developing an open source package, this may be an interesting workflow you might want to follow. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you found this interesting and subscribe if that's the case. And see you in the next one. Bye.